I am CD Mwapweze, your rural news tour guide. Let me show you what they showed me and please believe this story. One of the most prominent names you come across in the history of Nigeria is King Jaja of Opobo. Born in 1821 in Umudroha, Amibo, Imu State and sold into slavery in Boni Island, River State, Jaja eventually rose to become a king in Opobo land and one of the smartest businessmen of his time. Following a power tussle among rival factions in Boni in 1869, Jaja established a settlement which he named Opobo where he became King Jaja of Opobo and declared Opobo independent of Boni. Jaja increased his operations in the hinterland and expanded his European contacts, leading to a highly successful trade. Opobo soon dominated the region's lucrative palm oil trade after Jaja blocked access of British merchants to the hinterland, giving him an effective monopoly. In fact, Opobo sometimes shipped palm oil directly to Liverpool and this was done independent of British middlemen. Opobo became the largest European trading station on the West African coast. Powerful brokers like King Jaja commanded fleets of 300 to 400 large canoes, each of which could hold up to 2,400 gallons of palm oil. Jaja eventually had problem with the British colonialists and was banished into exile. The rest is history, as Jaja never returned to Pobo land until his death in 1891. Rural news tourism took us to Opobo land in Opobo Nkoro local government area of River State to see the territory created by King Jaja and the waterfront where thousands of canoes landed to transport palm oil from Opobo land to other parts of the world. In Opobo, we saw a monument erected in honor of King Jaja, one of the most fascinating rulers in the Niger Delta during the 19th century. We also saw a big bell said to have been first set up by King Jaja himself for alerting the entire Opobo if he needed to pass across information. We were told that the bell is used today to indicate entry into a new year. They ring it every 31st night of December at exactly 12 midnight to indicate the dawn of a new year.
I am now at the palace of the great King Jaja of Opobo. That's the palace, but you can see that it has been rebuilt and is now wearing a new look. But this was where the great King Jaja of Opobo reigned from. That's the palace. And you can see the monument. The monument is still there, indicating that King Jaja actually made impact in Opobo land. And uh, I've also shown you the big bell. The big bell that is still used today to signify movement into a new year in Opobo land. At the waterfront, the excitement we had was something else. The sight was wonderful. We saw the waterfront that led to the high sea where British merchants landed to buy palm oil from King Jaja. Waterside in Opobo where the great Jaja, King Jaja of Opobo did the trade that made him popular and of course brought him in enmity with the colonial masters back then. A bit scary but fantastic sight. There are four jetties in Okobo today. Ogolo Jetty, Purple Jetty, St. Paul's Jetty, and the main jetty which is called Jaja Jetty. Today, passengers traveling by sea board speedboats at this waterfront to different parts of the country. Life in Kokobo land by the water side. We just saw King Jaja's palace and then we saw the, uh, the statue erected to honor him. Now, here is the seaside that you must have read about where the sheep that loaded goods you know he was trading on were moved from here to Europe and America. Everywhere still looking very interesting, a nice place to visit. Life in Okobo land. As it waterside in Okobo. As it standing at the, standing at the tip there looks scary, but it's an interesting thing to do, so you can visit the Bubble Land anytime and then come to this seaside and have fun. Let's see. This is as far as I can go. We took a look at another jetty. This one is called Purple Jetty. The first one we went to, that one is the main jetty and it is called Jaja Jetty. We saw some kids with nets to trap crabs. They showed us how to catch crabs too. Okay. Yeah, 
crap. Na crap. You don't have fun. You don't bite, Abby. You don't bite. But now, no, now we bite the hand on. No, no, they bite. I don't come out the this thing. Okay. Okay, now this thing where you come out. My crap. This is crap that has just been caught from. So this is not the net. Yes, in the water. And this is not the food. Yes. So we go to like the top one. Then if you drag them up, the other one if you drag them up. If you drag them up, the other one is like the net. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, the crab go, fall inside. Yes. What you see in the middle of that net is the food for crabs used as a bait. Once the net is lowered into the water and the crab starts eating it, the boy holding the net feels the weight on the net and pulls it up. As the net is pulled up, the crab falls in and is pulled up with the net onto land. Despite how scary it was to stand on the jetty and look at the sea, kids in Opobo find this place as a nice spot to swim at will. One of them okay. even showed me no, on, his swimming skills. Wow, look at him. Hi, You are missing where you? Everybody is missing. 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 Everybody is <laughs> and this is where people who want to travel to Bonne, to Aquaibom, even to Lagos, this is where they come and then they take you know, kinds of different kinds of boats to move to their uh, various destinations. Now the great king Jaja of Okobo, this was where the ship used to land and then he moved goods from here to Europe and America. So this is the great jetty where King Jaja of Okobo had his ship land. Now this is an exciting place to come. You can visit Okobo land anytime and then have fun when you come to the waterside. 
when it was lunch time, we looked around and saw a lady selling roasted yam and potato with fish. I took a break and had a nice plate of roasted potato and fish. The city of Opobo has narrow streets and there is communal relationship among those who live there. As we were leaving the town, we saw a group of young boys and girls dressed in traditional attire and dancing along the street. I was told by the bike rider carrying me that these were students of the secondary school in the community celebrating the end of year by parading the streets and getting financial gifts from residents. The bike man urged me to show some love to the kids and I did exactly that by giving them some money. They were really excited. <laughs> The trip to Opoboland is one experience that we found very remarkable. 